So we we'll start with a MATMUL demo. We're going to use CODI to analyze MATMUL, which is the uh, well-known metrics to metrics multiplication algorithm. We start by loading CODI as a model. I already did it, but you have to do it, of course, and then NVIDIA environment. The first we need to do with Cody is to configure um, the settings of Cody. So PW report dash dash configuration wizard. Um, th this is in order to uh, set the C target compiler to use Cody as default. In this case, we suggest to uh, use the option no target compiler. So we work in the compiler agnostic mode. So Cody uh, makes the static analysis without taking, uh, without following um, the, the integration with the target compiler. Uh, so uh, the same question, but for C++, we said no again, and for Fortran, no target compiler. So now we have set Cody to work in the compiler agnostic mode. We don't support um, for now the NVIDIA compiler, but uh, you, you can try the compiler driven mode with GCC if you want, but just as a homework. Uh, we are, we're going to use the compiler agnostic mode uh, throughout the, the course. Um, so, this is basically the, the code of metrics metric multiplication. Nothing else to, to talk about is pretty well known. And now uh, let's proceed with the screening report of Cody. PW report dash dash screening main dot C. And let's add include tag solve. Uh, so we don't, <laughs> we have some, uh, Tax, uh, some checks disabled as default, but with input tax all, we enable them all uh, again. And dash dash, we have to always pass the compiler flags um, at the right of the dash dash separator. So I include dash fast. So here we have the same screen report. Uh, we see that the screen reported eight checks of which one, uh, so th these checks are potential performance optimizations that we can apply to the code. And these eight uh, checks are split across these uh, seven stages of the performance optimization roadmap. And in this case, the most important one for this course are the multi-threading uh, performance, um, performance, um, Things that we we have to we can apply to the code and offloading performance issues detected. So at the bottom of the output, we'll we'll uh, always leave suggestions uh, with a next command, the code command that you can follow. And in this case, we're going to run the checks report. So this is the screening report, which uh, identifies and calculates the number of checks that uh, are report. And now we want to see this uh, eight checks, and we do it with the uh, checks report. And here we have the checks, the eight checks that were reported in the screen. Uh, in this case, for example, Cody is uh, suggesting us to apply loop interchange to improve, improve the locality of reference and enable vectorization. Um, we can follow the suggestions again. In this case, the first one to increase the verbosity level of the output with, uh, it is basically the same um, invocation that we already invoked, but now with the dash dash verbose flag. Uh, let's do it. And here we have indeed a way more detailed output. So the here is the loop interchange suggestion. Now with this verbose mode, Cody is um, identifying which uh, are the um, loop headers that we need to interchange. So the loops of the line 16 and 17. And 
This out of fixed entry is telling us that Kodi has rewriting capability to apply this uh, this fix automatically for us. Uh, let's do just that. We can copy and paste it, but in this case, we are going to um, edit this dash dash in place because otherwise Kodi will uh, rewrite the, the same input code, uh, the, the input source file. And in this case, we want to generate another file. <coughs> So main um, leaf of loop, loop interchange dot C. So this will be the output file. Uh, sorry, remove. And. Now it is generated mainly, let's see. So it basically applied loop interchange to this loop nest. It did interchange the line 16 with the 17, uh, interchange the K with the J. Uh, now um, let's apply, uh, offloading. If we see the other um, checks that were reported for Batmul, we'll see that Cody is suggesting us to apply uh, offloading. Consider applying offloading parallelism to for a loop. And if we um, see the dash dash verbose output, we will see, let me check the PWR55. Here, PW directives offload ACC. Let's uh, run this one. So we, we provide two rewriting options in this case. We can uh, generate a version with OpenMP offloading or uh, OpenACC pragmas. And let's do just that in this case. The ver we want to apply the um, uh, offloading to the already uh, to to the loop interchange version and dash o so mainly acc dot c. Same. And here we have, uh, so Cody now generated automatically the, the new version with the open NCC pragmas. Let's see it. Um, let's see, let's see. So Cody automatically inserted with this PW directives uh, invocation, this uh, open ACC pragmas. And we can we can do the same for OpenMP. Uh, As in this case, just copy and paste it. It's easier uh, the um, invocation that we have prepared for you in the step by step guide. Uh, yeah. But the steps are, are the same. Just you can copy and paste the suggested command <clears throat> by Cody in the proposed mode and just uh, editing and changing the dash in place with dash o and the name of the output file. And here we have the of open open MP of loading version. And here we have the open MP version. And now we can write. So we have prepared a, <clears throat> and a launch script. Let me check if everything is all right. Yeah, you can just run it with. Batch. 
and but uh, basically we'll see these results 14 seconds um, for the original version six seconds around six, six seconds for the um, version optimized by Cody with loop interchange and then on top of that offloading with open SEC and the same for OpenMP on top of the loop interchange optimized version with five seconds. And while this execute, uh, you may ask any question that you may have. Manuel, want to ask something? On my side, I remark that uh, following the workflow that we have described, you can produce GPU enabled code to run on permuter. Also emphasize that the command line support different ways of working. If you work typically standalone, you probably will prefer the dash O option to produce files with new names with the different versions you produce with Kodi. But if you edit it in place and you are, for instance, using a control version systems, you can edit in place and you can see the differences through the com uh, um, control version system. And as you have seen here, Kodi aims to promote uh, best practices and portable code. For instance, it's very clear in the case of OpenMP with this uh, a way of managing data transfers for, for data types that are double pointers in, in C. So these are some of the of the things to remark, I think, from this very well-known example. Maybe Helen, you would like to remark also anything else while it gets executed? I think you're doing very well. <laughs> Cover a lot of good points. <laughs> Perhaps you want to you want me to proceed with the next uh, demo while this keeps running. Let's maybe give it some seconds uh, scroll down through through the report uh, to the section additional remarks uh, in, in the in the in the in the browser. Oh sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please scroll down there. Additional remarks, for instance, the NVIDIA compiler, if you scroll down, you can see this nice uh, reporting where it tells you for every file, every function, every line of code, whether it applied different uh, optimizations or not. For instance, this fuse multiplier and add are optimizations that the, code, that the NVIDIA compiler was able to do here. If you scroll down, you can also see that uh, uh, it reports loop carry dependencies when it comes to try to enable loop interchange or offload computation. So in principle, the pointer notation that is typical of C arrays is typically a barrier for the compilers to, to optimize code. You will see later in the Fortran version that the NVIDIA compiler is able to apply loop interchange while in the C version, it is not able to apply loop interchange. So this is one of the reasons why using tools like OT for you as developer to enforce in your code loop interchange will help you to create more performance portable code in your uh, using, using this tool. Just to remark is you will continue to scroll down while we wait for the queue. Let's scroll down. The GNU compiler. It's very good at generating binary code, very efficient and very fast. We can see one of the challenges of the TCC compiler that is the reporting. It's, if you scroll down, it's, you can see it's difficult to follow what it, what it is doing. This is enabling, asking the compiler to report everything it finds in the, in the optimization report. And if you scroll down, finally, you can see that if you enable loop interchange, and the compiler as GCC compiler to produce binaries, you can see that you go again from something above 30 seconds all the way down to nine, nine seconds. So a similar performance gain 
to what you get with the NVIDIA compiler. So essentially, um, this is a way of showing that uh, when you enforce explicitly in your code best practices and you invest some time in that, you can produce better code that can produce more portable and more performant code on different systems. I think it has finished. Yeah. yeah. So releases, please. So uh, thank you, Manuel. Uh, here we had results, 40 seconds uh, again uh, for the original version without uh, fast, dash fast. And now with dash fast, uh, NVIDIA compiler already did a little bit of change by itself. Uh, so it took uh, 12 seconds. Uh, a big performance improvement. Now, uh, Matmul with Lupiter change and OpenACC. In this case, it took six seconds. So, offloading on top of Lupiter change optimized version by Cody, and the same with OpenMP on top of the Lupiter change optimized version by Cody, and around five seconds as we expected. Now let's proceed with the next demo of Matmul with Fortran. Okay, so any questions at this point? Can you say some words about uh, include tax equals all, or should we choose some different equals equals not all if the code is too big, or yeah, choose, uh, uh, you know, focus on some other memory, or you know. Okay. By, or... Yeah, good, good question. By default, Kodi is intended to enable uh, to facilitate its usage in every in any system. So, think of a laptop that anyone can use, or a computer where the GPUs are, or, or a supercomputer without GPUs. So, we want Kodi to be out of the box experience to be good. So essentially, by default, if you don't enable any tags, you will see that multi-threading and offloading checkers are disabled. So what you get are the performance optimization report related to single core optimization. So everything related to simplify control flow, instruction set architecture, memory efficiency, and vectorization. So this is the best way to get started using Kodi with an out-of-the-box experience without requiring the user to install or configure complicated environments like GPU uh, software stack. So this is the default. So if you want to move a code or port code to GPU, you definitely need to add include tax all, which will provide everything that Kodi finds all the way up to multi-threading or floating. Okay? So by default, we would suggest in permuter to use include taxol. Yeah, for example, uh, in this case, I'm not using include taxol, and you will see how multi offloading and quality checks are disabled as default. Mm -hmm. So with include taxol, yeah, we enable them again. Okay, thanks. The question in chat, go over the compiler setup step. Maybe you can just show this for Fortran. Because. Yeah. The compiler setup, you mean with Cody? The... Like wizard. Okay. Yeah. So, PW port dash dash iteration wizard. Sorry. So we uh, start the sequence uh, with C, Fortran compiler. And we, for, for this course, we're going to use the, this option, no target compiler, uh, for compiler agnostic mode, for the three target compilers, C, C++, and Fortran. Uh, as a homework, if you, if you want to try uh, Kodi with a target compiler, for example, Sheet Fortran, you can try the option one or two uh, in pair mother, but in, in your laptop, you may have, uh, Kodi automatically detects the compiler that you have installed in your system. So you can try um, and any other uh, Fortran compiler that we support. But in this case, again, no. 
no target compiler. I don't know if that's answered your question. I don't, I can't find the chat. Okay, good, good question again. Then why do we need this? Okay, um, as, we, as we said in the tutorial, in order to get good performance out of a system, it's important that you consider at least the hardware, the processor, the compiler, and the operating system, right? So in particular, from one compiler to another, they differ a lot in the capabilities. A very good example is vectorization. You can see Intel compiler doing more aggressive and correct vectorization, for instance, than GCC compiler. So we have started to, integ to develop integrations with compilers, in particular, starting focusing on vectorization, because that way you can use Kodi to go beyond the state of the art and what your compiler can do for vectorization. And also we have already started to extend this to memory optimizations. Some compilers report, for instance, that in order to optimize a given loop, they have fully enrolled the loop. But sometimes I'm fully enrolling the loop, is slower than vectorizing a short a loop with a short trip count. So in order to understand exactly how to get the better performance out of a given environment, in particular out of a compiler, you typically need to understand what the compiler has done and interpret the compiler optimization report. So this is was the, the this is the main motivation use case to use this configuration wizard. So initially, uh, ODE could probably be set up on permuter not to use, not to uh, require this configuration wizard. But in, we, we thought it would be useful for the users to understand why we, why we use this and why it's important to get performance to consider what the compiler is already doing. And okay. answer the other question of between the difference of no target compiler and skip. The no target compiler, uh, we are um, telling Cody to disable the target compiler, so never use the target compiler for that language, while the skip option works uh, by no target compiler as default, but it can be rewritten with a compile command JSON file, but uh, it's an advanced uh, use case of Cody, uh, perhaps if we start talking about it now, it will create more questions than than solving uh, questions, <laughs> I guess. Probably, yeah, probably, let me point out, probably tomorrow, it will be better to understand why this is needed. Today, we are seeing uh, the invocation of PW report and PW directives with a dash dash separator, so that you, as a user, has to specify the file input file name and also all the compilation flags that you need to successfully analyze that, that code. Imagine that you have to do this for a large code with thousands of files. Which are the flags that you need to put on the command line to successfully inspect 100 files? It can be a nightmare just to come up with a set of flags that are valid for all the 100 files. So for real projects, we will see that tomorrow, we provide integrations with the build systems. And the build systems like CMake, Make, Ninja, WAF, they provide ways for to produce a JSON file that has for every single file, all the flags that are used in the compilation of the application. And Kodi can consume all that list of files and all the corresponding flags for the files. So this is, one of the scenarios where the difference between a skip and no target compiler makes sense. So probably tomorrow when we start playing with larger applications like embed TLS or uh, example, we you will better see the motivation to have to make this difference. Okay, I hope this this is enough.
Any other questions? Yeah, he, here is a question about uh, what if Cody can detect uh, and make recommendations over codes that already have uh, pragmas. And the answer is yes, but limited. Uh, Cody can suggest to insert new pragmas uh, to the same loop that already has a pragma, if and only if the new pragma uh, does does not interfere with the current one. So, for, for example, Cody can uh, insert an OpenMP pragmas for offloading if um, the the loop already has um, an OpenACC pragma. But it will not help you if you want to insert an OpenMP pragma for offloading if the code already has an OpenMP pragma for multi-threading. So the answer is yes, but limited for, for now. One thing to point out is that typically there is no interference between the pragmas if you use single line pragmas. For instance, if you're able to use pragma OMP parallel for private share reduction, whatever, in one single line. You can typically have one line for OpenMP and one single line for OpenACC. So in those scenarios, these are maybe common scenarios. But in general, in, in C, for instance, you can use multi-line pragmas that has the bracket, open brackets, closing brackets. So depending on the syntax that you are using, this can make the pragmas, OpenMP and OpenACC, interfere between each other and don't uh, have the expected behavior. So this is some of the use cases why we need to put some restrictions on that. These are new capabilities in, in Kodi uh, latest version that we're using today. So maybe we have time and we have in the, in the training, maybe tomorrow we can make some short demo about how to use these capabilities to interleave or to produce OpenMP and OpenACC programs. Okay, let's see how much time do we have for a, another demo uh, tomorrow. Makes sense? Okay. Okay, good. Well, let's proceed with a Fortran example. So it's, it, this basically consists on repeating the same demo of Matmul 4C, but now for Fortran. And we start again with a PW report that that screening of Matmul S. Um, And here we have also 14 checks. And again, split across the seven stages. And we follow the suggestion to run the checks report to see these 14 checks. We can copy and paste the suggested invocation that we always leave at the bottom of the output. And here we have the 14 checks report. So what we are going to look at here is the recommendation 35 that is suggesting us to apply loop interchange 35, um, avoid non-consecutive array access for variables A and C to improve performance. And the 55 to apply again offloading parallelism to for a loop. So before we, we had the recommendation 39 of applying loop interchange and the 55, and now we have the 50 and the 55. Um, this is because we have an, an issue for Fortran uh, with, a, with a recommendation 39, and uh, we cannot apply the loop interchange automatically as we did for C, but this is an issue that is uh, on, on develop. Well, for now, we can follow this uh, recommendation 50 uh, that suggests us to apply loop insert change, but manually instead of with the auto fix uh, entry. So let's um, run the verbose mode again, as we did for C. And let's 
Uh, here is the, the recommendation 50. <laughs> so it is suggesting gas. Uh, sorry. 35. 35. 35. Yeah. It is suggesting us to apply techniques like loop fission, loop interchange, loop tiling. In this case, we're going to apply loop interchange. So, but manually, nano uh, dot C, sorry, F ninety. So we need to interchange these two loops, the J and K. And we have it here, looking to change. So I already did it, but I basically interchanged these two loop headers. That's the only manual change that this recommendation is suggesting us to perform. And now, uh, just, just point out that in Fortran, the ordering you need to, to, you need to apply loop interchange to different loops. You need to go from IJK to JKI. I'm not sure if that is the ordering you applied. Look at the look at the step by step guide. Scroll down. That one, JKI. Yeah. While you're doing that, let me clarify this. We the way we work is we first identify new uh, performance optimizations to automate, like loop interchange. We first bring this to C, C code because this is the more mature support that we have. And when this works at the, in the checks report, it is the loop interchange trigger, for instance, is triggered. Then we implement the rewriting capabilities. And once this is working, then we bring the same capabilities into Fortran. So Fortran is a bit going behind C in that, in, from this perspective, but um, what we can tell you is that loop interchange is currently under development so that this step that is, you can see here manually will be automated in, in future versions of Kodi as it is automated in C, okay? One thing also to point out, if you allow me, uh, Ulysses, scroll up to recommendation 35. Uh, and the C that one. version, you mean 35, okay. That one. So the, the reason why we focus on the 35 is that because loop interchange is one of the potential solutions that you can apply when you have non-consecutive access, array memory accesses in the loop. In particular, when you have a strided memory accesses. So what is relevant is to identify first the memory access that is non-consecutive or strided. And what loop interchange brings additionally is it checks the context where this is executed. It finds the two loops that drive the access in each direction and tries to find tests, the different ordinates that are possible and tries to find the ordering that will remove the extracted access and convert it into a sequential access. So from the point of view of what you need to automate in the code or what you need to check as a programmer, recommendation 35 is one of the requirements or preconditions to implement loop interchange. So loop interchange will be doing additional checks on the code about the control flow of the nested loops where the non-consecutive memory access is, uh, is happening, okay? This is the reason why in the step-by-step -step guide, we suggest to focus on the recommendation 35 as a candidate to apply loop interchange, okay? And this will be automated in one of the upcoming versions of Kodi. So Ulysses, please continue. Thank you. And now let's uh, offload the code with PDI directives, following again the suggestion of the um, recommendation 50. 55. 55, yeah. Which is uploading. Yeah, and again, we can copy and paste the suggesting to invoke PDI directives, but we have to uh, change the in place with the show. So we generate a, a new uh, output file. In this case, we have it prepared. Let's remove the 
form a five. Point B. And let's check how it looks. So here are the pragmas that were insert automatically by PL directives. And I'm missing the open ACC here. Anyway. Can paste the offloading uh, invocation of Peter Directive with the ACC and show please the OpenACC version. Yeah. And I will point out one thing. Okay. Yeah. If you look at the OpenMP, OpenACC version, the OpenMP is similar. As we said, the implementation of the capabilities for Fortran go a bit behind the C. In C, you, you've seen how. The offloading capabilities of the offloading pragmas inserted by CODI in OpenMP and OpenACC just produced correct code that was successfully compiled by the GNU or the NVIDIA compilers. So one of the things that CODI needs to do when annotating code with offloading pragmas is to understand if the loop can be parallelized. So it inserts the parallel loop or the pragma teams distribute a parallel for pragmas and also it needs to insert the data transfer uh, directives and clauses. Odi aims to try to figure out which is the shape and which is the element the ranges of elements that need to be transferred from the CPU to the GPU and to the GPU to, to back to the CPU. So in C everything is fine and everything works perfectly. And here in Fortran you can see that Kodi is not filling in the ranges, array ranges for A, B, and C yet. It will do it in the future. So it, it is still produces a perfect template code where you just need to fill in the dimensions of arrays A, B, and C to have OpenMP or OpenACC complete code. And this is pointed out in the report of PW directives through a message that says, please complete the access range for variables yeah. A, B, and C. Okay, this one. that one. So again, this will be automated as the loop interchange thing. So in this particular step-by-step, -step, you are asked to copy and paste the correct uh, copy in and copy closes with the array ranges already filled in, okay? And the same for OpenMP. Yes. Indeed, the notation that we generate, the name of the array, parentheses, uh, the two columns, makes the compiler fail. So when you try to compile this generated code, the compiler will complain about A, B, and C being uh, mapping data mapping clauses or data transfer clauses that are not correct, that need additional information. Okay. So Kodi reports it to this message, and you will also see that the compiler complains if you don't fill in the ranges. Let's try it. So while we'll, we see the result, there is a question in the Google Doc. Okay. Maybe Helen, this is, this is for you. When will the instructions will be available? It is, yes, it is true. Sorry for that. A little difficult to follow the instructions just by sharing the screen. Right. I think we, this is available already, right? The instructions, uh, it's, uh, it's in the, in the slides. Um, so I've uploaded a zip file 
for examples and slides um, on event event web page. So you download the zip file and zip it, you'll see all the all the, all the um, <clears throat> instructions, step by step guides, and um, slides as well. Let me post the web page again so you can easily get it. And then you will have a chance to do uh, hands on right after this demo and to follow along with the Batmo again. Okay, it should execute uh, probably soon. Maybe we can show in the in the step by step guide in the meantime Ulysses the performance they will get yes. in permuter mm. it's at the end of a step six So 40 seconds for the original version, 12 seconds for the version with loop there change that we applied manually with the guidance of Cody. And 12 seconds again with the offloading version on top of the loop interchange version. And an error for the OpenMP version. Okay, that's for the report. Um, please go back, go up to page nine. At the beginning of page nine, that one. Oh yeah, we we were looking at the result for uh, Fortran, and now for <laughs> the NVIDIA compiler of Fortran, twelve uh, thir thirteen seconds. Uh, it, this is applying again, probably looking to change automatically, and half a second for the OpenACC version on top of the loop that change version, and again an error for the OpenMB version. <clears throat> yeah, regarding the error, is one of the, for instance, differences that you can experience when executing different environments. If you rename the pragma OMP parallel four by the, and you use parallel do and you use loop, which is more similar to the semantics of OpenACC, then it works fine in the NVIDIA compiler, okay? This is the type of things that in the generated code, OD is still not aware of the target compiler. So in the future, if we set up the compiler with the configuration we are at the beginning, and we implement these different uh, uh, aspects of the degree of support of different compilers for GPU offload, this could be also be facilitated by by Kodi. Okay, but so far with the generation, you get <coughs> to experience these difference differences. So uh, here we have the results of the execution uh, again, 30 seconds and no performance difference between the loop interchange manually applied version uh, because they both use uh, F dash fast. So the NVIDIA compiler is already performing the loop interchange um, automatically. And the OpenACC version, uh, less than half a second and the OpenMP version, the same error. Yeah. So for instance, if you scroll down to page uh, 11, we can see that the NVIDIA compiler for Fortran reports that he has successfully applied loop interchange to the first two loops and to the uh, next three loops, while in C, he didn't succeed to do it. So again, enforcing these best practice optimizations explicitly in your code will help you to make your code more independent 
or less dependent on the capabilities of the compiler. Okay. And if you scroll down, you have the details. The GNU compiler doesn't perform loop interchange, even for Fortran. So if you apply it manually at the very end, you can see how with GCC, you can generate code as fast as uh, with uh, NVIDIA. Scroll up with that one. From 40 seconds down to 12 seconds. Essentially, this is what NVIDIA compiler for Fortran can do automatically while GFortran cannot do it. Okay, another example of the different capabilities and matureness of compilers for GPUs and how you can write code that is less buggy or more, let's say, performance portable, if you allow me this to use this term here. Okay, so I think uh, that's it. Any questions about these Fortran examples? We have one final demo of a defect that Kodi can detect in Matmul. So while Ulysses is preparing the, the demo, we have some time, a couple of minutes for some questions. Any questions? Uh, again, this is Docker. So one question is when Kodi recommends these uh, recommendations, is it, is it prioritizing about anything or is it just going through the code in some serial fashion and identifying whatever, you know, <clears throat> and report, creating that report? That's a good, very good question. Uh, that's a, essentially a important usability issue. That is, Kodi, essentially, when you inspect a given code, it goes through all of the loops. If you have three nested loops, it will go through each loop separately. If you have three consecutive loops, it will go through each consecutive loop separately, and everything it finds will be reported. So imagine that uh, for big codes, you can easily uh, come up with reports with hundreds of checks. So one of the key issues that we are working on is to help the user to triage or select what is relevant for a particular performance optimization objective. So for instance, if your goal is to go to the GPU, starting with performance optimizations for memory, which are relevant for CPU and GPU in general, like loop interchange, and then moving to offloading, it would be probably enough for you to get the performance you want. So we are going to define other flags where you can select a particular, let's say, environment, CPU, GPU, or microcontroller. You can select what type of optimizations you want to use for a particular device or a particular system like Perlmutter. And based on that, using that information, we will try to reorder the output of the checkers so that in first place, you find what we believe can potentially bring more benefit for that performance optimization problem. At this moment, you can only enable or disable uh, checkers of the different steps of the performance optimization roadmap. A scalar, control, memory, vectorization, multithreading, and offloading. That is coming, we're working on that. So we expect to have news about in that direction uh, soon. Anyway, in performance, in particular for GPU, a key input for you to triage and select what is relevant is to make a profiling of the application, because this is not a profiler. So you can use any of the other tools recommended by NERSC staff to profile your application, identify the functions or the loops that are hot spots, and you can just instruct Kodi not to analyze the whole file, just to analyze one single function, two functions, one loop, three, four loops, those that are really targets that you have verified uh, that are hot spots. So in principle, at this moment, we need to rely on these uh, best practice recommendations. And we are working hard to try to improve and help to triage what is really relevant. But you will always need to specify somehow a particular optimization problem. It's completely different to optimize metrics, metric multiplication for single core optimizations 
with loop tiling, loop, loop uh, interchange, fusion multiplier app that try to also move to the GPU or just stick to vectorization because you don't want to address multi-threading multi with OpenMP. You do it in a different way or you do it through multi through MPI processors. I don't know. There are different ways in which you can implement the different types of parallelism. So the best we can do is to provide different ways of for you to specify a performance optimization problem. And based on that, try to rank or reorder the output of the code checks report. So, so, this answers your question. so you are suggesting that the, the order is very useful to look at like the, the first one, the first instruction would be the most beneficial and so on and so forth. Well, according to our experience, and we are working uh, in that direction, everything you, got, you do to make a, an efficient memory usage essentially will be beneficial both on the CPU and the GPU and for vectorization. So promoting sequential memory accesses against the threaded accesses could be beneficial across different types of hardware. The same thing applies to control flow. If you have a loop with nested if then else's, with loop invariant conditions or with conditions that depend on the loop iterator, but they could be the code could be refactored somehow to have branchless code. Again, branchless code is simpler and enables the compiler and the hardware to produce faster code and execute faster. So again, everything you do in that direction essentially will benefit. Uh, performance optimization. And in real applications, this is typically a balance because you will need to manage the complexity of complex data structures, classes potentially with methods to get access to the, to the attributes of a given class. So again, for performance optimization, you will typically need to code a more in a C-like or pure Fortran-like code than more object-oriented code. This is I don't know, a rule of thumb that you can have in mind. And this is something that we are using inside to give more relevance to some recommendations versus different ones. But again, for us to recommend something or to rank the recommendations, we will need some feedback or some inputs of what performance optimization problem you're interested in. Something basic, going to the GPU or just to stick to single core optimizations, okay? so. In this thing, in this in this line, we will be sharing a survey that Helen shared. We are trying to connect with people interested in somehow working or helping us or contributing to to pro propose new rules to automate or even why not get this feedback or this experience so that we can create a tool that is really useful to serve a particular community, Fortran GPU programmers or C. GPU programmers. So if you have ideas or you have you are you are willing to uh, share some insights with us or discuss these things with us, please in the survey give us your contact and give us what you are interested in and we will try to uh, create a community. Okay? Thank you. We are experts in automation. The, the next staff is experts in performance optimization. So we can work together well. They know what essentially is best practice. We can figure out what to automate. So again, finally, the users, what are you using? What are the problems you are mostly interested in? So that we can work together, the three of us, to try to implement what is more useful for a given community, in this particular case for NERSC uh, users. Okay, so I encourage everyone to take a look at the survey. And of course, please engage with us to try to build a tool that is really useful for all of us. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. So um, let, let me please uh, suggest that Ulysses finishes the demo. Then we will do the break for the hands-on. And during the hands-on, we will also be here to reply uh, to questions. So Ulysses, can you please go on with the last demo with Mahmoud. Sure. So in this case, we, we're back with C Mahmoud and we have uh, an OpenMP of loaded um, 
version. And if we run Cody on it, we will see that it reports a defect number six, missing deep copies of non-contiguous arrays, A, B, and C, in data transfer to accelerate the device. So in this case, is telling us that we have a, a serious issue, and this will probably not uh, run. And um, we can check it with just by trying to run it. And you will see how this is something that the compiler uh, does not check. And indeed, this code's compiled, um, but it fails at, uh, at running. This particular error, if, if we have added to the documentation, to the step-by-step -step guide, some contents of the open catalog, uh, but essentially here the issue is related to data layout. Depending on how you decide uh, to represent matrices as one deep plane array, as uh, double pointers in memory with data spread across the memory, or any other implementation, it can produce code that seems to be correct to specify data transfers in GPU floated code. But in C in particular, that is more, more difficult, it can make uh, unexpected errors rise. And that related in the end to the way we represent the data structure. So we need to adapt data transfers to the data structure we have chosen for to represent the matrices. And this is the intention of this example. Exactly. Here we have the same results. It could compile, but it cannot run. We have an ex uh, runtime error. And in order to solve this, we only have to uh, let me uh, show you again the source code. I mean, see. Uh, this is the, the same code that we already seen with, <laughs> with the, the first demo. But we're clearly missing uh, the data transfers, the data maps. So if we add this, um, these sections of the code, it will solve the issue. And here we have uh, in the in this step by step, we have a link to our knowledge base where this uh, issue is specified with more details. Any questions about this? If no, please Ulysses, allow me to share. Um, yeah, I have a question. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe you're going to cover this in the future. Hi, my name is Uplit. Uh, so my question is, uh, suppose I have a large application um, and uh, I just want to analyze one file out of it um, and then the particular uh, code in, in that particular file. Uh, is Cody like a static code analysis, like it goes through the code and uh, gives us the recommendation or is it uh, the code has to run uh, successfully to get a recommendation out of it. It is a static code analyzer. So you don't need to run the code to uh, get the Kodi checkers report or the Kodi screening report. So uh, it doesn't matter like if I uh, take the whole application into perspective, just the single file out of the application would do? Exactly, yeah. Okay. You will see that tomorrow. Tomorrow we will be using three three complete applications: uh, CPIC, which is a particle in cells code written in C; Nucor, which is a as a Fortran code developed by the Orange National Lab; and also MBTLS, which is a 
large application with hundreds of thousands of lines of code written in C, where you will see how to scan the whole project. But also, you can go directly to a particular code snippet, a loop, a function, a file, set of loops, whatever is of interest for you, and focus the analysis of Kodi only on that snippet. Tomorrow, we will definitely see that. Okay, thank you.